So welcome everyone. We're really delighted you're all here. We're Alex and Alex from Ubindi and it's great to see you all. Um, today's webinar speaker is our friend Manu, Manuel Molina de la Torre. He's originally from Spain, uh, but right now he's in Bangkok where it's late. So he's making a big effort to stay up late for all of us. And we appreciate that very much. <laughs> um, Manu has been earning a living as a yoga teacher since 2008, teaching classes in person and online and working in yoga retreats and teacher training programs. A couple of years ago, he wanted to get more entrepreneurial and realized right away that he never learned anything about business or marketing in any of his yoga and fitness trainings. So then he invested in actual business training and education and applying what he learned, he started to see the results he was looking for. And we're extremely grateful that today Manu has agreed to share with us some of the basics. Uh, Manu, thanks very much. And I'll let you take it away. Well, thank you so much. And thank you everyone for showing up, for coming here to this webinar today. I will try to do my best because as Alex say, it's 10 p.m. here in Bangkok. <laughs> same as in Cambodia, same as Richie. So yeah, I am super excited and grateful to be here. And Alex, you described it, my intro really well. The fact that I started as a yoga preneur after working for so many years in the industry. I did have, I did have a little bit of background because during those years um, in some of the yoga retreats that I worked, I was also um, taking the social media and I was doing some kind of stuff stuff besides the, the, the teaching. However, that, is, that was a completely different story when I started to promote my own services, my own classes as an entrepreneur, as a yogi preneur. So basically this is what we are going to share today. Just let me know everyone if, if you are okay, give me a thumbs up to let me know that you can hear me okay, that everything is fine, okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my slides. I prepare some slides for this webinar. And I'm going to do that through my computer. <clears throat> so I think you should be able to see what's going on. And I think you are at this point. I won't be seeing you when I'm sharing my slides, but sometimes I'm going to take them off so that I can see your faces and I can have some feedback from you because I love to have feedback. Uh, it's not, this is not today about me, Jess, talking, but I also would like to, to see you interacting with, with, with this class. So if there is something that I don't see or something that's going on and, and I need to, and I don't see because I'm sharing the slides, so please, Alice, let, let me know through <laughs> with your voice because otherwise I won't be able to see. Welcome everyone to this webinar, Business and Marketing for Yoga Teachers One-on-One. -on -one. I'm going to start saying that just the fact that you are here, it means a lot. It means that you are taking one step forward for yourself, for your own business, for your own brand, for your own project. And that means a lot. It means a lot because um, many people sign up for this webinar live and we encourage everyone to come to the live webinar, but I'm sure everyone is not here because, you know, we know sometimes life happens, sometimes things happen and we don't manage to do everything. But the fact that you carved the time for today coming here, that means a lot. Well, let's start by asking a very important question, which is why? This is one of the most important questions that I asked myself um, when I started to dig deep into what do I wanted to bring into this world as, a, as an offering, as a business. And my question today for you is, why are you here? Why are you in this webinar? And perhaps you're here because you are looking to grow your yoga business or your yoga brand, but maybe you don't know where to start doing that. 
If that is your case, show me a number one in the comments, in the chat, so I can see that this is your case. I know that nowadays we get so much advice. You can just go to the internet and find thousands of people that are giving you advice on where should you start when you open your business, when you open your brand. And to be honest with you, I when I started my journey, I follow so many people who were giving me advice and uh, probably they were doing this with the best intention. But some of the advice that I received, it wasn't the the best advice that I needed for that stage in my journey. For instance, just as an example, I was starting giving my first steps and one of my uh, coaches at the time told me that I should have, I should be in every social media platform. And that idea felt so overwhelming. So if that is your case, if you are looking to grow your business, but you are confused because you hear all of this advice, you need to do this or you need to do that, then drop me a one in the comments. I've seen already some one there and I would know that that's you. Maybe you are wondering how to be, we have Angela already saying three already, okay. <laughs> Very quick, you already read the slides. So let's go to the second part, which is maybe you're wondering how to be seen and heard among all the noise in the internet right now. Because let's face it, since 2020, since we have all of the uh, pandemic, everything that happened, it has become very difficult to, to be heard and seen among all the noise. Many yoga teachers, Many of us are there in the internet and there is just like kind of so much of it. And if this is your case, you can drop me a two in the comments. I have, haven't seen already many twos. Many of you is case two. You find that it's very hard to be seen. And I feel you 100%. And I promise what we're going to see today, it's going to help you get clear on what are the steps that you're gonna need to, to be able to be seen. Okay, I see a lot of two and three. Let's see number three. Maybe you're here because you are looking for more students for your classes, but you struggle <laughs> with the word marketing. Oh my gosh, if that is your case, drop me a three because you know, for many years, I was just like, oh my gosh, marketing doesn't have anything to do with yoga. Or I would say things like, I don't like and I don't know how to market myself. And it's true. And nobody likes to market, to market themselves because you, here's the truth. We are human and we cannot market ourselves because human cannot be sold or bought. But we can learn to market its or services, which is something different. But anyway, let's dive in a little bit more into all that so that you can get an idea of what I mean by marketing your services and how can we do marketing in a way that feels better. Anyway, if you are here, if you are one, two or three, just letting you know that you're in the right place I am with you, I feel you, I know where you are at because I've been there before and I understand how, is, how it feels to feel that way in any of those ways. Letting you know also that this webinar today is not for you if you are looking for a magic pill to grow your yoga or business brand overnight. I'm not gonna provide you with that. I don't have any magic. I wish I had a magic solution for you and that I could apply to my business and I could give it to you. That would be amazing, but that is not the case. What I'm gonna share with you today is not a magic pill. If you are looking, I don't think this is gonna be the case because I know you are all open-hearted yoga teachers. And, uh, but, if it was the case that you are looking for a strategy which is sleazy or unethical, or is a way to sell your yoga offerings and to grow your business that 
doesn't feel right, this is also not the webinar for you. So if that is your case, I'm so sorry, but you know, you can, you can just like say bye-bye now because <laughs> this is not what I like to teach. This is not what I like to teach the yoga teachers I work with. I like to teach something that feels right inside. And finally, if you are looking for a quick and easy solution without doing the required work that it takes to grow a brand, to grow a business, this is not for you. If you're looking for that easy and, and quick solution, I don't have that for you. So let's continue. I'm gonna introduce myself a little bit just for you to know a little bit more about me. My name is Manu, as, as Alice uh, say. I am, as you might have guessed from my accent, it's, uh, I'm from Spain originally. And um, I'm the founder and CEO of Emprendedores del Yoga. And I think this is a great opportunity to practice your Spanish with me because I have a Spanish brand name, but I also teach, I teach in Spanish and I also teach in English, but I know mostly everyone here who is watching me today speaks in English. So this is the perfect opportunity. So let's do this together. I can see some of you in the screen. I'm not hearing you, but I wanna hear your voice practicing your Spanish. So please repeat after me, after me. Emprendedores. Emprendedores. Del. 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 Yoga. 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 Amazing. <laughs> All right. Yoga in Argentina. Emprendedores del yoga. So this is the name of my brand, the name of my business. In English, it means yoga entrepreneurs. And yoga entrepreneurs, it's here to support yoga teachers in their business journey, in your business journey. This is why, the, why this brand was born. It was because through my own experience as a yoga teacher, I faced so many challenges and I wanted all the yoga teachers to have it easy on the way. So really good on your Spanish, well done. I'm impressed. Bendiciones. 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 Yes. Muy bien. Gracias. Gracias. <laughs> All right. So I will, I will share a little bit more about me. So right now I'm working with Emprendedores de Yoga and I'm coaching yoga teachers, um, business and marketing related stuff. So basically the, the kind of things that very rarely or we never learn in our yoga teacher training and that I think are super important, especially if you are a yoga teacher like me, when I was doing my yoga teacher training, I knew inside that I wanted to make a living teaching yoga, that I wanted to make it my professional path. And I know there were some people in the, in the course, in my, in my first yoga teacher training, that wasn't necessarily their case. But for me, it was. And uh, back at the time, to be honest with you, I wasn't aware that I needed to learn many things. It, I, I knew that I needed to learn new things and new skills when I started on my own. So my purpose or the purpose of Emprendedores de Yoga is to bring this knowledge and support you even before you start taking your first steps. I'm also a yoga teacher. I'm a 500 hours yoga teacher. I'm also a personal trainer. And I've been working in the yoga and wellness industry over the last 12 years. And as Alice was mentioning at the beginning when she was introducing me, <clears throat> when I started my yoga entrepreneur journey, <clears throat> my yoga entrepreneur journey, and I started it here in Thailand, to be honest with you, even though I had some experience and I've worked for, for retreats and I was working behind the scenes and doing social media and blogging and doing other marketing stuff, but to be honest, I felt a little bit lost. And over the years, over the last, it's been already since I started my journey, it was the beginning of 2019. Um, I've been having highs and I've been having lows. And uh, some of the highs that I had, it's been 
running my own retreats and workshops internationally. And I have done that online and in person. And that has been one of the most amazing, gratifying experiences to run my own retreats. And also, I'm going to be honest, one of the most profitable experiences. And I love, and people who came to my retreats, they just got so much from it. Some other of the highlights that I've been that I've been having over these years uh, was um, since the last year, since COVID came, because I was lucky enough to start my online teaching journey before COVID. When COVID came, I had so many friends, yoga teachers, who reached me and say, "Hey, Manu, we know you are teaching yoga online. How do you do that? Please teach us." And that was basically from March 2020. And from that moment on time, it was the time that I decided that I, wanna, that I wanted to focus all my energy supporting yoga teachers. And since then, I've been working with yoga teachers, have been then uh, bringing the business online, but also have been then elevate their brands, their marketing, and so on. And finally, one of the best highlights that I've been having in this uh, over these years is been creating my own brand, Emprendedores de Yoga, which is for yoga teachers, but also being invited in some of my favorite podcasts. And I don't know if, if you are familiar with this podcast, um, the Connected Yoga Teacher or the Marketing Yoga with Confidence podcast. Please drop me a yes in the comments. If you are not familiar with these two podcasts, just to tell you they are great resources. Uh, yes, Alex, uh, uh, Don also say yes. I know many of you know Shannon and Amanda from the Connected Yoga Teacher and Marketing Yoga with Confidence. Just to let you know that both of them, I felt um, for me, they, they were like kind of my teachers, my teachers because I've been listening to them for years. And for me, being featured in the podcast, it was just like something unthinkable. I would never think about that. But this year, it has happened. Actually, we recorded the interviews the last year, but this year I've been invited to their own podcast as an expert. And that to me felt like a high. I was just like, wow, this is amazing. I also have my own podcast, which basically helps yoga teachers to uh, don't say I've learned so much from them. I'm with you, Don. I also learned so much from, from Amanda and Shannon, and I'm really close friends with Shannon. And um, I've also created my own podcast. I talk to yoga teachers in Spanish every week. So those are things that I feel like pretty proud of and say, wow, this is amazing. I also want to tell you that over these years, I've been also at the beginning, especially of my journey, I was super unclear of who was my ideal student or client? This is a question that I would never ask myself because I simply wasn't aware that I needed to have an ideal student or client. And even I also didn't know where could I find them? Where could I find my ideal student or client? So that was one of the most low moments that I have. I was so confused. I was so like, I don't know how all of this work, uh, who is the people who want to work with me. For instance, I was working with so many different kinds of people. If that is your case, drop me a one in the comments. If you feel like it's difficult for you to, to find your ideal student or client or, or that you even maybe don't know who that is. Some of the lows that I experienced is that I was feeling, often I was feeling very overwhelmed and confused about what to write about or what to post on social media or what to write on my website, what to write on my blogs or how to even market my services. Yes, Charlene say yes, number two. Okay, I feel you, one, two, three, Loretta. Amazing. Okay. I hope this today is going to help you. So yes, the third one, launching offerings to zero signups. Ouch. Yes, that has happened to me. And, uh, you know, like planning an offering, thinking that uh, the offering that I'm creating, it's going to be amazing and people is going to love it and then put it in out there and having crickets. These are things that have been some of the lows that I have. Yes, on three, Annie Marie say that. 
I'm with you. I know it feels so bad, Angela say, yes, it feels awful because you're putting all the love, right? You know that that can help your people, but then no one signs up, yes. <laughs> what I will share with you today is what I learned. This is, let's say I'm gonna try, I've been trying to look through the things that work, the things that didn't work, and that's what I'm gonna share with you today. Basically, one of the things that I learned is that having a simple, strata, a simple marketing strategy and a simple business and marketing strategy would have me saving time, money, and energy when I started my own journey. And really, this is what I want for you. I want you to be crystal clear of where you are and where do you want to go. And as I say, I hope this webinar today, it's going to bring you some clarity. What did I learn? Well, some of the things that I learned are the five mistakes yoga teachers are making right now. And again, please, if you are doing these mistakes, don't feel guilty of anything like that because these mistakes, I am the first that I'm pointing fingers at myself. I've done all of those mistakes. So that's one of the things that I'm gonna share. And then I'm also going to share with you the first steps you need to do or the first steps to grow your yoga and business brand. So as you can see, today's webinar is super pack of value. I'll ask you to stay with me until the end because at the end of this webinar, I will share a link to a PDF with the slides of this webinar. So you don't need to take any notes. Everything is gonna be, you can put all your attention in this webinar. At the end, you will have the, 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 the link to the PDF and you will have everything written down as you are seeing in the screen. If we have time, I will give a little bit of time for Q&A and I also, going to share something with you. If you feel that whatever you learned today helped you to understand something or, or you feel that this webinar was useful in some way, I'm gonna offer you the next step if you want to work with me at a deeper level. And as I say, Emprendedores del Yoga, I'm here to support you. I'm having my chai. This is my tea just to just to have my voice on place. We were talking before about how at Emprendedores del Yoga, something that I feel is very important to say because I work with yoga teachers and I know when we talk about business and marketing in yoga environments, it sounds not very, you know, we are used to the words business and marketing as something like very corporate or when we think about marketing, we think about that person who is coming to you and they are trying to sell something. If that is to, if, that, if that is your case, drop me a yes in the comments so that I can see that you feel that way. If you feel that business is something that it should be completely separate from yoga or that you cannot mix both of them or marketing, marketing is something that, you know, yoga teacher, we shouldn't be doing marketing. Here at Emprendedores del Yoga, I have a vision about business and marketing and business for me is service. We sometimes call it in the yoga world as seva. For me, business is helping other people to solve some kind of problem that they have. Of course, business is not only service. 50% of businesses serving and helping people and 50% it's making money because if you are not making money with your business you don't have a business and so here obviously it's it's necessary to do marketing and I want to be upfront and clear with you if you want to make money on your business on your yoga business you need to do marketing but I also know that marketing sometimes can feel very bad. So what I understand from marketing and the way I try to do my marketing equals education. There is a description about marketing that I didn't make this up. This is from one of my coaches. And I think it was an amazing description that remained with me forever. And I actually make it mine now. And it is 
marketing is the art of educating your audience in the value of your services. Hear this again. Marketing is the art of educating your audience in the value of your services. If that resonates with you, draw me a yes in the comments so I can see that you like this idea about business and marketing being service and education. Don't say yes, Stephen say yes. Awesome, awesome, very nice. I'm with you. I see so many yeses. Yes, 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 yes. All right, let's dive in. Let's dive in a little bit deeper. Yes, for Ubindi too. Yes, for Ubindi, Alex, of course. Let's dive in. Let's see the first five tips that I bring for you today. And the mistakes yoga teachers are making at the moment. And as I say, please don't feel guilty if it's your case because I've done that before. The first one is trying to teach everyone on the internet. And um, this is really important for us to understand is that I, as yoga teachers, when we did our yoga teacher training, we never thought that we were going to be teaching online or that we were going to be creating a brand and showing up on social media. But hello, 2020 came. It's not only 2020, even before 2020, the fact of having an online presence, it became more and more important. Now, when you have an online presence and you are creating your online brand, it is important that you don't speak to everybody. Because what's going to happen if you speak to everybody by default, no one is going to truly resonate with your message. I'm going to give you a very simple example. I know that today there is no uh, someone who wants to learn how to ride a horse in here. Maybe there is, maybe some of you it is, but I'm sure you are also here because you are a yoga teacher. <laughs> So I don't know if you understand the example that I'm giving. What I'm talking about is like when you are talking in the internet, if you want your message to be clear, you need to know who is the person that you are talking to, which is your niche. I teach mindfulness meditation, amazing mindfulness meditation. I practice mindfulness meditation. And mindfulness meditation, I would say, is not a niche. Mindfulness meditation, it's a practice and it's a tool that you have under your belt that you can use to teach in your niche. Your niche is a part of the population that share a common, usually they share some characteristics, but usually they share a common problem that is not being addressed. Let's dive, let's go in. If, if, if you have any questions, actually, before we go to number two, if you have any questions about what your niche is exactly, and you wanna go a little bit deeper, Hang up with me. We're gonna have a little bit of time at the end and uh, for Q and A, and also you'll see that there are ways in which you can learn all of this much better. So that was the first mistake that I've seen so, uh, many times. If you are number one, drop a number one. If that is your case, if you have like so many different people that you are trying to talk about, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, let's go to number two. Number two, the second mistake that I see many yoga teachers are doing nowadays online, it's sharing only about yourself and your yoga journey. And this is not necessarily a bad thing because often when you share about your journey, many people are going to resonate with the message that you're sharing. But something that you may want to ask to yourself, if you are running a business if you and you want to attract clients to your classes, do you want the people who are resonating, are the people who are resonating with your message 
the people you want to bring to your classes. And I give you an example that it happens with myself. For instance, if I want to share something about my process right now in my business, I may be two or three steps um, forward. And what I'm sharing right now, uh, not what I'm sharing today here, but if I share where I'm at in my business right now, maybe this is not something that serves you right now because you are like maybe one or two steps behind in your business journey. So it's really important that with your journey, not only, um, it's not bad that you necessarily that you uh, share about yourself, but bear in mind that when you are running a business, understand that business is a service and it's not about you. So here, it's important to understand how your journey can help and inspire other people in their own process. Give me some feedback. Let me know if this is clear. If that is clear, give me a yes, give me a thumbs up so I know that I'm explaining myself uh, fully and that you completely understand. Um, something that I can share about this is that think about where you are at right now. Ashley say yes, thank you Ashley for your feedback. Think about where you are at right now in your journey and where you were maybe one year ago, maybe three, maybe five or 10 years ago. Where were you in that journey? So when you share about yourself in your social media, understand how the message that you are sharing it's going to connect with that people who are few steps behind you. Okay, I see so many yeses. Someone say, I love uh, business and it's not about you, but it's about serving. Yes, I'm with you. All right, let's move to number three. Are you ready? Yes, we are. <laughs> okay, number three, it's talking only about your paid offerings. And I've done that, I'm guilty of that. Hello, I raise my hand here. Raise your hand if that is your case too. Nowadays when I see that, I pull my hand, I'm like, no. I've done this in the past myself. I've been not posting, say on social media for weeks. And suddenly I have something, I have my classes, my schedule, or I have a new offering. And I'm like expecting that I'm gonna post that on social media and people are gonna sign up right away. And it's always a delusion, it doesn't work that way. And if you are posting only about your paid offerings and you are wondering why people doesn't pay attention to that, what I would say what you need to think about and what you need to reflect is having a strategy that includes nurturing your audience with free value. And let me be clear with you, because I know sometimes when we talk about free in the yoga world, when we talk about free, we know that free, we've been told many times that we shouldn't be doing our work for free. If that's your case, give me a yes or give me a thumb up. If you feel that you don't want to do the things for free because you want your work to be paid and you want to be um paid what you deserve, you need to be paid. So when you hear the word free, sometimes you feel a little bit like mm, uh, resistance. Let me know. If you feel a little bit contracted about the word free, let me know in the comments. Remember when I was telling you before how I see at Emprendedores de Yoga, we see marketing as education. This is how you do your marketing. You do your marketing sharing with people. I'm always conflicted when people preach that I should be paid for everything. I couldn't read everything, but yes, like there are so many things, especially if you work online, that you need to do for free. And this free, it's called marketing, okay? Hello, I'm gonna be upfront to you. Today, I'm sharing all of this value for free. But I'm also going to share, I'm also going to talk about my offerings. I'm also going to give you an opportunity to know and to connect with me. 
And that is also part of marketing. So let me know if that resonates. Let me know if that is clear. You can drop some comments. Hi, can I ask you? Yeah, that would be amazing. If you can keep the, the, the question for the part of the Q&A, that would be better because otherwise I think I will, I will lose track of, of the, is that okay? Yeah. Um, we will be back to you in the Q&A part at the end and, and we'll go with that question. So let's go with number four, which is going with the flow. What is going with the flow? Oh my gosh, who doesn't love going with the flow? <laughs> I love going with the flow. I love having the freedom to do whatever I want. Um, I didn't understand the third thing. Okay, we, uh, there's someone that didn't understand the third thing. Okay, so the third thing means that if you have social media channels, for instance, and you are sharing and you are talking only about your paid offerings, it's very likely that nobody's gonna sign up for your paid offerings. So instead of talking only about your paid offerings, you need to have a strategy on your social media, if you are using social media, that includes a way in which you can nurture your people with free value. And of course, you also are going to share about your paid offerings. It's not only gonna be free value, Sometimes you're also going to share about your paid offerings, but don't limit your post only to your paid offerings. I hope that makes it clear. I hope I explain myself fully. Please give me a thumbs up if that was the case. And um, so going with the flow, what do I mean by going with the flow? Going with the flow, it's like basically when you are creating or delivering content and um, this is one of the other things we never, we never thought that we were going to do when we were doing our teacher trainings. Okay, before I move on, please, I, I like to have someone giving me a thumbs up or a feedback if number three was clear, because someone said that it wasn't clear. An idea, I've seen it's offering a free recording, not necessarily live. For example, clear, Steven, thank you so much. Okay, okay, awesome. All right, so let's get back to going with the flow. When we were doing our teacher training, who knew that we were going to be creating content? It's just like if you wanna have an online part of on, on your business, who knew when you were doing your yoga teacher training that you would need to write blogs, that you would need maybe to have a podcast, that maybe you would need to write on social media, okay? This is something that we didn't learn back then, or personally, I never learned those things. But here is the truth. If you want to make a, if you want to make a space in the online world, if you want to create a brand, and have um, a digital side of your business. And it doesn't necessarily, uh, necessarily means having social media. Maybe you don't want to have social media and that's completely fine. You can still have a business, but to be clear, you need to have any kind of content. Maybe you don't have social media, but you have a podcast, maybe you have a blog, you have a way to provide with that free value that I was talking in point number three, and that you are going to be nurturing your audience. So I've been going with the flow many times, but what I understood is that when I'm creating my content or when I am creating my offerings, going with the flow didn't work so well. So what I've learned over these years is that having a consistent plan is that is sustainable and I want to focus on that word sustainable, this is much more important. And when I say that I want to focus on this word sustainable, it's because sometimes, I, as I was talking at the beginning of, of this talk, I was saying that someone is going to tell you to post five days a week on Instagram, or that you need to write every week to the people in your email list, or that you need to do this, or need to do that. 
And maybe that is not sustainable for you. And it is okay to be consistent in a way that feels sustainable. So maybe for me, it is okay to post once a week on Instagram. And for you, you feel pretty fine posting three to five times on Instagram. As an example, I'm talking about social media and Instagram, but just to let you know that social media, it's a great tool, but it's not necessarily the place where we need to be. But yes, it is necessary to create some kind of content. Let me know if point number four is clear, going with the flow, posting whenever you feel like it, or, or saying, okay, next week I'm gonna create an offering versus having a plan and a strategy that is sustainable for you and that it's going to help you to uh, have a flow, knowing the offerings that you're having and maybe creating that marketing strategy before everything is uh, coming. Actually say clear, Okay, thank you so much, Ashley. So we're gonna move on to number five. And number five is, this is one of the mistakes I've seen all the yoga teachers are doing, which is competing, even though I don't like the word competing, with all the yoga teachers by lowering the prices. And uh, this is something that obviously there's so much yoga, there's so many yoga teachers saying, oh my gosh, right now in YouTube, all the yoga is for free. No one is gonna pay for my offerings. And uh, sometimes we can go there and, and make our offerings lower. But truth be told, if we are starting to lower the offering for uh, the price of our offerings, that is never gonna allow us to reach our financial goals in our business. So what I suggest for this is to specialize so that you can raise the prices for your offerings. And what do I mean by specializing? Specializing doesn't mean taking another yoga teacher training. Specializing means focusing on one niche and learning and understanding who are those people you want to help with what problem and so that you can become the expert at that. In the future, people will more and more want to work with experts. When I say I don't like the word competition, sometimes I hear amongst yoga teachers the word, we are in a saturated market. And yes, we are in a saturated market if if all of us are, so to speak, like kind of the same, we are just yoga teachers. But if you are a yoga teacher who specializes in that specific thing, that is gonna make you stand out of the crowd. Let me know if this is clear, number five. Of course, there is so much to it. If that is clear, give me a yes. There's so much to it, and uh, but basically finding your specialty. What is that thing that you know that you can help people with? Alex, say yes. What is the thing that you can, what are the skills that you have that you can help people with? Is it helpful? Let me know. I can see some yeses already, so that's awesome. Uh, these are the five things that I wanted to share with you. There's a little bit more to that. We almost have, we almost here one hour, so I'm gonna try to be quick as much as I can. Sorry, this is a little bit delayed. <laughs> so let's move on. Before we go to the second part, I want to share with you, uh, this is Anna. She is one of my students. It's crazy to think that I met Anna only in 2020 when I created my workshops for, for yoga teachers to bring their classes online. Over the year, over this uh, last, since 2020, Anna and I have been working together. And one of the things that I've been helping her to grow and to stand out in her business, it's mainly in this, uh, her social media. And this is one of the screenshots of her Instagram before we work together. And as you can see in here, there are not pictures of her, even though she was the main yoga teacher in her ivory yoga studio. 
and uh, there was no a cohesive um, market, uh, eco a cohesive uh, branding feeling or message or any clarity or storytelling within her post. And even there was no optimization of the variety of the post here. What she was posting was one photo, different from the other, different messages. People didn't really connect and they didn't show any interest in her offerings. This is now, here on the right, you have the work after we've been working together with Anna. Basically, I've been coaching her to, to do this work and she appears more often as she is the head of her hybrid studio and people love seeing her. There is a more cohesive branding message, more clarity and more storytelling. And there is a lot of content variety in her grid. She has video, reels, carousels and IGTV. And every post have a very clear call to action, be it sign up for my new webinar, uh, sign up for my newsletter, visit my YouTube channel, join my paid offering. So this is something that Anna has been applying all of the five tips that we've been seeing today. She has been applying because she's been learning with me. And these are the changes that he, she has seen. Much more people are interested in what she's posting. In fact, some of the recent polls, she has like six, uh, like 36 comments, 16 comments. But let's face it, when we are working as entrepreneurs, even if you are using Instagram as a way to grow your business, likes and comments are not the end of the game. This is not what brings us money, okay? Even though it helps with the algorithm and for us to have more reach, but at the end of the day, the real shift that is being happening for her is that people are starting to be interested in her paid offerings and connect her via DM and uh, in the messages, in the posts um, of their, her paid offerings. You can have this too, okay? This is not something, as I say at the beginning of the webinar, this is not something that can happen overnight, but if you get clear or, or on what do you want to achieve and how do you want to show up, you can have this. Let's go and see the, fir the, the first three steps to grow, to grow your yoga business and brand. But please give me a little bit of feedback. Give me a thumbs up or something. I'm going to drink some water. Let me know that everyone, that everything is okay so far. Let me know that if you've been learning. Okay, yes, gracias, De Christi. Thank you, gracias, Christy. So let's move on. The first step, number one, it's get clear on your voice as a teacher. Ask yourself, who am I and what are my most powerful skills as a teacher? What is the knowledge that I have? What makes me shine? What makes me be happy? That's the first question that you need to ask yourself even before you start thinking in opening your yoga business. Number two, specialize, niche down, find your niche, choose your niche and understand why and how you can help them. Don't teach to everybody, choose only one niche. And number three, create a marketing strategy. Find your consistency. Remember what we're talking about is something that feels sustainable and talk to your audience regularly. Can you do this alone? If that is your case, if you can do this that we have seen today on your own, my friend, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and take the world, take what you learned from me today, use it, make it your own, use it on your own way. And this, my friends, it's all that I have to share for today. Oof. <laughs> it's time for questions now. So there's somebody was asking about this niching down stuff, saying that um, the senior teachers don't really do that. They just teach yoga and they're really just yoga teachers. Um, in, in my opinion, it depends on what we're talking about. 
in the old world where you had a yoga studio in a town, um, the goal was to fill the room with local people. And so, you know, appealing to everyone made sense. You wanted to sort of have the lowest common denominator, vanilla or chocolate, but that's it, right? That's the ice cream that you have. Um, when you go online, it's really the opposite. Like if you just Google yoga, um, you, you, there's no way that you're ever going to be in those search results. But if you're doing yoga with dogs for blind people while drinking beer, if that's your thing, you will be found for all the people out there. And there are billions of people using the internet who will be looking for that. And that's why niching down on the internet and when you're doing especially online things, that is the way um, to be found. Otherwise, there's no way that anybody is ever, you know, it, it's maybe different when we're talking about what you teach in class and how you teach, but just in terms of marketing and, and finding your ideal client, um, it's, it's the opposite of what used to work. It used to work uh, that you're a yoga teacher and you can help people with being flexible and healthy. Um, but on the internet, you're one in a million if you, right. if you it's, go it's, that route. It's just a question of imagining if you go on Google and if you type online yoga class because you want to take an online yoga class, you're going to find a lot of stuff. So that means people are not going to necessarily find you if you're the person who just describes your offering as online yoga class. But if you say something like uh, women's yoga for back pain or something like that, then perhaps the person who is searching for that will actually be able to find you rather than just some more general yoga class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not, we're not lecturing here. Man, <laughs> man you can tell us more. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I agree 100% with you, Alex. And I think, you know, what you're sharing, it's like I am with you 100%. And, uh, you know, the thing is that um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a different way of seeing things because, yes, it seems that if you are open for many people, you're going to be able to reach more people. But the truth is, if you go right now to Facebook, Instagram, social media, or Google, if you don't give me a reason why to learn with, from you, I'm probably gonna, you know, probably you're gonna be invisible for me. Like I, everything is becoming much more very specific. Like things are becoming very specific. I can go Google, and Google the weirdest thing on earth, as you said before, yoga with beer and uh, and goats, for instance, you know. And if there is a teacher who is doing that, and they have been a minimum effort with, you know, like maybe writing a blog and working with SEO and so on, this person is gonna show up. And so the the, the thing here is like it, it's. It, it's a different perspective because it's not that you are there open to everyone. It's almost like you kind of niche down, talk to people about what you do, and then people start thinking about you as that person. And it might take some time to build up a community, you know, and to find those people, but it's worth it because the people that you are finding, I'm not going to say that, okay, now I'm going to niche down. Um, my niche, for example, are yoga teachers who are starting this <clears throat> entrepreneur journey or that they want to elevate their business. And it doesn't mean that everyone is going to like me. That's for sure. Some people may, you know, some yoga teachers, they might feed into my ideal client, but maybe they cannot stand my accent. Maybe they don't like something about me or maybe they don't resonate with my teaching and that it's okay, that it's okay. But the truth is, if I, if someone, a yoga teacher who fits into my niche, they find my Instagram or they find my website, they're gonna know within seconds whether or not I'm gonna be the person who's gonna help them or not they're going to have it very clear because I'm going to be talking to them directly. Yes. Anyone, there was someone who was asking and I said, please, let's leave it for the end. 
Please be free to ask now. We've been here a long time, but I'm gonna just <laughs> jump in and ask a question. Um, before, when you were talking about, uh, you know, the big mistake of just basically communicating to people your paid offer and nothing else, and that people should basically have sort of free stuff. You're not necessarily talking about free classes, um, but maybe free value otherwise. Free like value otherwise, or or maybe get something that's not money, like maybe get a testimonial or feedback or or something. Um, I, I just wonder if you have more to say about basically selling yourself or your services for free, um, because mm -hmm. we see on one hand we see you know people who are aggressively just selling their paid offerings not having success but we also see a lot of yoga teachers especially sort of giving everything away for free and never making mm -hmm. any money and, and there has to be some balance right yeah absolutely that's that's a great question alex and i'm glad that, that you bring that up you know um a couple of things i want to say one of them is it um, maybe the yoga teachers who are sharing full length yoga classes in YouTube, in YouTube. Maybe they have a different business goal than the business goal that you have. Maybe their business goal is to become like someone known on YouTube and to find eventually, you know, to become like a kind of an influencer, so to speak, and to find um, the brands that are going to support them their way. But usually the people that I tend to work more are yoga teachers who want to sell their offerings. So for yoga teachers who want to sell their classes and their offerings, I don't, I never recommend them to do a full length class. I think having a 15, I would say 15 to 20 minutes, maybe class or maybe the cup of a class, if you are using YouTube, that would be the maximum length that I would recommend to do like a kind of a 15, 20 minutes, because that is going to give people the possibility of in your teaching. And also it's going to help you to grow your, your channel. If you are sharing on social media, you can share tutorials on, you know, little things, just like um, making people understand that you can help them. Just like giving people a way to have a little quick win basically does that make sense uh for me yeah totally <laughs> absolutely yeah and i have another question for you um because you you mentioned a lot about instagram and i think you your social media presence is a lot on instagram but what about a teacher who doesn't like instagram or you know does they want to spend a lot of time on social media, do you think it's possible for them to share content with their existing students and encourage them to bring friends through a referral program or grow your community without, you know, you can create content for your community, but maybe not for strangers out there. What do you think about that? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I think, Alex, is that I was talking about this today with a friend that, you know, often we have all of these strategies out there, you know, all of kind of um, formulas, you know, that they would say, okay, if you run a business, you need to have, you know, like kind of that same first advice that I have, you need to be in every social media platform. And let me be clear, I, I love social media, even though sometimes I also feel a little bit like, oh my gosh, I cannot step in today. I think they are a great tool for, for growing your business, but it doesn't necessarily mean that every yoga teacher needs to be on social media. Maybe that's not your thing and that's okay. Maybe you want to have, you want to create a different kind of content that you are gonna share with your community of students and, and people that may be interested in your classes and you don't have to make that public you don't have to reach other people if you don't want to. I think it's absolutely no. Some people work. I know some people who, you know, in every, um, I think in every industry, there is still people who work with referrals, you know? I love Instagram. I have so much fun. I love sharing content in there. But I'm going to tell you, for me, when I think about social media, I don't think social media are reliable. I don't see it as my 
uh, even though I share a lot, but I don't see it as my main platform. What most, for me, the, the, the things that I see are more important, it's to have a more direct content with the students in, in the case, in my case, um, uh, for instance, for people who, who follow me on Instagram, I encourage them to join my newsletter. And I make sure that, you know, having my newsletter, having my website where I'm gonna be sharing some content that is um, SEO um, 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 driven, you know? So basically for those of you who doesn't know what uh, SEO means, basically it means when someone types on Google and types something specific, it's gonna be, they're gonna find my website uh, if I kind of make it in a way that it's gonna be easy to search for people. Anyway, all of this to say that um, it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily a thing that every yoga teacher on social media, absolutely not. Yeah, and like you said earlier, getting likes and hearts and followers on Instagram, it, we, we in the startup world, we call that often a vanity metric. You, it makes you feel good, but you don't have clients necessarily, right? Right, so because the danger is maybe making a strategy or <coughs> making a, a plan for what you want to post on social media and spending all this time doing that. So you're doing the first part, but it's to understand what is that translating into for your business? Is this creating your result you know, like or, you or you're just posting for the sake of posting at some point you know, like. yeah exactly yeah but it's uh, and, and one other thing other about people. about instagram also is that you know yes you have reach um even though like it's becoming i think every time it's becoming more and more like more people are there so it's even kind of becoming more difficult to be seen so that's why i think you need to have a very clear voice and know who are you talking to. But one of the things about Instagram, which is one of the things I don't feel very happy about, is that because of the algorithm, the way it works, it works that uh, basically they always wanna bring things new to your feed. A few years ago, it worked in a different way. A few years ago, if you post a photo today, if I post a photo today, you may open your Instagram three weeks from today and you see my photo because I'm your friend. But today, we, it works everything differently. We work with the famous algorithm, which means if I post something and I am going to have some kind of engagement, more people are going to see it. But even so, like in two days, that hype is gone. Bye-bye. <laughs> you know what I mean? While if you have a blog on your website or if you have a podcast and it's uh, a little bit, you understand a little bit about ACO, which, uh, which is basically something that helps you to be found, that has a much longer uh, shelf life, basically. Or even YouTube. YouTube have much longer shelf life than Instagram. Sorry to do this, but we're going to sign off too. And when we do, everyone will get kicked out of the room. <laughs> um, we've recorded it. And probably if Manu allows us, we'll put it on YouTube uh, afterwards. People can watch it again. And I just want to thank everyone for, for coming. And again, Manu, thanks a lot for staying up late and, and doing this thing. Um, you yeah. want to say anything? No, just thank you. Thank you, everyone. I hope you, you got some good tips and advice out of it from Manu. And as Manu said, you can you can always connect with him to ask him some more questions or um, dive deeper. So thank you again, everybody, for joining us.